Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dr. Akif Bey. Today we'll be talking about management of cyanotic spells. So cyanotic spells basically occurs because of uh, increase in right to left shunt. So increased blood of right ventricle going to the left ventricle leads to increase in right to left shunt and thus mixture of this deoxygenated blood of the right ventricle with the oxygenated blood of the left ventricle does lead to increase in hypoxia and leading to acidosis which increases the pulmonary vascular resistance, uh, increases uh, respiratory effort, tachypnea and hypernia. So whenever there is a decrease, increase in uh, respiratory effort, there is more blood ret uh, returning to the increase in venous return and more blood coming to the right side of the heart and thus again leads to increase in right to left shunt. So uh, whatever uh, the management of it, it basically all this thing increased right to left shunt occurs basically because of in right ventricular infundibular muscle spasm. So infundibular spasm leads to right ventricular outflow tract obstruction and thus the blood cannot flow from the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery. And also other thing is if there is anything which reduces the systemic vascular resistance, so the pressure in the left ventricle will be very much less and thus there are more chances of shunt between right ventricle and left ventricle. Okay. So now what are the various methods uh, for uh, reduction of cyanotic cells? Cyanotic cells is usually self-limiting and last less than 15 to 30 minutes. But sometimes they can be very much prolonged and may require emergency measures. So what is the measures is that? The first thing is hold the child in knee chest position. So what does this knee chest position will do is that this knee chest position will lead to uh, increase in... Uh, so this knee chest position will lead to increase in systemic vascular resistance. So because of the systemic vascular resistance increase, the pressure in the left ventricle will be high and this increase in left ventricle pressure will decrease the shunt from the right ventricle into the left ventricle and thus decreasing the hypoxia and thus decreasing the cyanotic spells. Second thing is calm the child. If you give ideal sedative is generally morphine. So what does this morphine causes? Morphine causes the respiratory center uh, suppression. So normally as we have already discussed in our uh, previous video of uh, theories of cyanotic spells, this cyanotic spells usually occurs because of hyper responsiveness of hyper responsiveness of the immature respiratory center. So the respiratory center which is there in the child is very much immature before two years of age and thus it responds hyper responsive to the hypoxia and thus because of that cyanotic spells occurs. So if you depress, suppress the respiratory center by using a sedative morphine, uh, so there is a decreased activation of respiratory center and thus it reduces hypernia. So when it reduces hypernia, so if your hypernia is reduced, all these things factors like this increase in cardiac rate, increase cardiac output, increase venous return, all these things will not occur and thus it decreases the right to left shunt. So other alternative to morphine is that uh, you can use either use midazolam, fentanyl or dexmedetomidine. Third is 100% oxygen supplementation. So 100% oxygen supplementation in the lungs, what will it cause? It causes the pulmonary vasodilatation. When there, whenever there is pulmonary vasodilatation, so if it tolerates the pulmonary vasculature here, the blood can easily go because this vessel is going to be now less resistance. The blood will go from right ventricle into the pulmonary artery rather than going from right ventricle into the left ventricle via the ventricular septal defect. So uh, giving 100% oxygen is also very much useful. This causes pulmonary vasodilatation and decreases the pulmonary vascular resistance. Next is sodium bicarbonate. So one of the mechanisms of cyanotic cells as we have already discussed is hypoxia and acidosis. So if you correct the acidosis, so this cycle of hypernia, increase in cardiac rate, all these things can be reversed and thus you should correct the acidosis by giving sodium bicarbonate at a dose of 1 to 2 milli equivalents. Other thing is beta blockers. Beta blockers uh, is a fifth uh, line of drug, fifth line of choice, which uh, we can give whether injection proper or not. So what does beta blockers do is decreases the heart rate and also the infundibular spasm. So basically, as I've already discussed, because of the infundibulum of the spasm over here, uh, there is increase in right ventricular, right ventricular output tract obstruction. So if you relieve this spasm, the blood can go from right ventricle to the pulmonary artery rather than going into the left ventricle. So thus, it is very much useful. If propranol is not available, you can use uh, injection metoprolol. So next thing is, uh, in refractory cases, you can use vasopressors to increase the systemic peripheral vascular resistance or systemic vascular resistance. So vasopressors like phenylephrine, if you use, uh, what does this help is, it increases the phenylephrine vasopressors, which increases the peripheral vascular resistance over here, and thus uh, increases the left ventricular pressure, and thus the gradient among right ventricular and left ventricular is less, and thus this admixture of blood will be very much reduced. So you can use uh, vasopressors, most commonly uses phenylephrine. Seventh, you should avoid any action that agitates the baby. So if you, if the baby is irritable, irritated, it may lead to what is called an increase in steroid release and this steroid can cause increased contractility of the infundibulum and the heart and thus lead to infundibular spasm. And the drugs to be avoided are inotropes like decoxin, dopamine or dobutamine. 
so if the spell is still persistent despite of all the fact all the treatment which is there uh, next in this emergency intubation and mechanical ventilation may be useful or you can use this emergency shunts can be used like a blalac toxic shunt pulmonary balloon valvular plasty may be required in subtractic cases hope you have liked this video uh, if you want more uh, videos like this do subscribe to my youtube channel dr akif bek and uh, if you have liked my video do share it with others to share my knowledge thank you